So first of all, who am I? Uh, I'm Hassan Yasser, and working as a technical manager for SCI, Software Engineering Institute. I'm sure a lot of people know SCI as a local and part of CMU, and we are known as a CMMI, which is maybe somebody's gonna say as a legacy stuff things, but actually we are doing a lot of software development process and an improvement. So, and I have 25 years of experience in software developments and start to work with government. As soon as when I graduated and from the college and start to work governments and after they came to industries, then started came back in government again, kind of semi-government work. So what I will do next 20 to 25 minutes, I'm gonna share my experience and how the DevOps really help to the government folks and mainly help us to deliver the application right on time and also get the DevOps be a solution provider or a solution things for the government idea. It's really hard to think about how the really government is gonna get DevOps in mindset because so bureaucratic, so big giant, it's not really going together, but indeed, yes, it is going together, so we made it. And I'm gonna share our basic success and how we made it. So I'm just curious about it there. So is there anybody who's working with governments or anybody who's doing any work with as a contractors? You guys know the pain, right? It's really painful to do that. So before starting the, the, all the Spains, and, and I grew up in Turkey, I born in Turkey, I came to the US around mid 90s. So I'm a soccer fan, so, and as you can see, and I have two kids, I'm doing the soccer coach as well. Why I picked the soccer team is really a DevOps is the team effort. So our approach was since day number one, oops, why is not working again? I don't know guys. Yep, there you go. So, soccer, as I said, is a team sport, and we have a lot of dependencies, a lot of team activity together, so we have to work closely as a team. And as an SCI, who we are, what we do, and a little bit mention about our roles, so we are getting uh, like a wake requirements from our government clients. So wake requirements says, okay, you're gonna do this. How we can do it really has no clear definitions, you just can make that things happen. Here's a problem. Here's things you're gonna solve that problem. You're gonna deliver to the, our end users and look for the very hard challenging problems, try to solve it. So we are getting requirements, as I said, like very vague and try to get into our enclave so, and try to really work based on a wake statement, try to understand what that means. So basically how we operate and working the, the fashion that we will look for work-wise and try to get understand and, and, and all the environment things. So internally we were working as a kind of agile shop. So we have the whole suite of CI and seed and everything else. However, we never really engaged it, the government closely, government folks. So whoever worked the governments, they know that there is a the bunch of roles in governments. They have like a program managers, so they have IT folks, they have end users and stuff, right? So when we develop something, so we were working internally, but however, we never able to talk with the government folks directly. So we never had a chance to talk with them because they never gave us a chance to talk because that's the nature of government. So it's really hard to talk at the beginning because it's all structured, all documented, right? So whatever we develop, everything, it looks like it's great. When we try to transition to the government, we were failing. So we had a lot of challenges. Why? Because we couldn't really get the right people on board, right? We were not able to talk to the right person, even though we have the some sort of requirements, what we're supposed to do, requirements is they're gonna do this one for me. But without lacking of knowledge about uh, the technology stack, without knowing the really end users, we had lots of challenges. So what happened after that, we got lots of conflict. We said, oh my goodness, where we are? What are we doing it? So we had one conflict from program, program manager says you're supposed to do this, and then upper management, which is mainly for upper guys, like the manager level, maybe beyond that, the, or direct director division or division head. So they were expecting something else, but we are giving different tools probably. So we're getting lots of conflict. Even the end user says, hey, I'm in this one, but we never had a chance to really talk to them directly, right? So what happened after that, we got so, so frustrated. Everybody remember that same problem, right? Germany versus Brazil game. So. <laughs> A lot of frustration. So even though we are really good, we know everything what we're supposed to do, 
Then we tried to deliver it to our client, our customer, or government. We got so frustrated. It happened a couple times for us, like beginning of the project. Even though, as I said, we knew every, a lot of DevOps things in our work-wise, when we transfer, transfer, we tried to try to transfer or the, the end user, we got so frustrated. Even though we got a lot of blame, and they were blaming, you're su not supposed to do this, and I was asking something else, we gave me another version, so we got so frustrated. We said, it's not gonna work out. Even though we know a lot of stuff as an SCI and we know the software development, something we have to do, right? Something we have to do in a supposed to in a right way. So we stepped back, we said, okay, now we know the DevOps, we know all the principles, we know the governments, and we cannot change the governments. There is no way to change the governments, right? The government is their own cultural things in, in the way of the management. And government has their own checks and balances because that's how the government is going to operate that. There's a lot of roles and responsibility in the governments. So we stepped back, we said, okay, how can we break the silos? How can we find the solution, achieve the same goal, but based on the government cultures and based on government expectations? So basically, when we look at in-depth problems, so what we face so far, it's all about uh, really getting uh, their trust and also understanding their requirements well and also try to get them on board as early as possible. So look for the, look for the analogy problems. So really, all these things and people in the government or program managers or the procurement division or the testing IT folks, they are working based on what they directed to do, based on their responsibilities, and nobody wants to take a risk. So what the risk basically means, they don't want to take any chance if the application fail, like a healthcare.gov, they don't want to go to the Congress to, for the hearing, because that may happen. So what's happening for all these risks and stuff, and they don't want to really get a lot of things. They would like to go more structured, more SDLC operation, more type of like a, you know, go step by step, make sure it's working, make sure it's like tested. So everybody's putting it, even though they, they, they are doing their work, however, they are, tr they are trying to transfer the response of another person to go around that. So, after analyzing all those things, we said, okay, we have the way to do that. So the way is really start from the beginning. The beginning means how can we start the contracting agreement at the beginning. So in the next fiscal or the funding cycle, we start to really get engagements with the right people. So we said, okay, here's a project. The project is really developing some prototype, right? We were trying, we said we should get a, some sort of staging environment or a testing environment as early as possible. During the, why oh, skip the right on this one too? It's distracting me. Sort of technical difficulty, guys. This is not communicating with me well. Oh my goodness. Yep. It's like I disconnected as the soul is Good. I'm not going to touch anything now. So, by that, of course. All right. So we start to get, as I said, we start to get the early acquisition cycle and, and get involvement with the right people at the beginning of the development cycles. So what had happened and, and, and during the contractual agreement, and we said, here is our capabilities we're going to develop. Give us a capability. And also, what will be the end goal? Where are we going to run that application? Let's learn what is the required technology stack to deliver it. And also we start to have uh, convince them having a staging environment or some sort of testing in the government's network. As soon as when we deliver something, it's gonna go back directly to the end users in their environment. As soon as like a running condition, like it's able to run, it's, it's running application in their environment. So we start to implement that. And after that, so we start the more automation. And automation means basically how we do in an environment, try to automate in their environment, the government environment. So automation helped a lot in that risk elimination. 
So when we do the work, like especially delivering application in a Docker container or a scripted environment, depends on application stack or install, somehow and Garmin IT folks, they start to do more and more and more frequent and all the time with similar things over and over and again, they saw the, what is the risk of this application. How can I integrate that? The other things we do frequently and really getting any application into the Garmin very difficult to right away. So we learn we have to go step by step, depends on what we're trying to achieve. Maybe you can get application into the, just to get security controls in it and try to get application integrated into the one of their testing platform. Get application integrated into the one of their existing application. So everything is done based on the automation. Everything done based on the scripting. So we create it and send it to the data environment, like an automated way, and deploy it. So that really has really helped us a lot. The other things really help to get Garmin folks involved, which is compliance check. So we did a lot of compliance check during the automation process. So during the testing process, we did a lot of compliance. As you know that Garmin is a bunch of compliances. You have to go to the FISMA compliances. You have to go to the Rehabilitation Act. Depends on what you do. You have to comply in the security framework. There's a lot of things has to be done. So as soon as we did this, all this compliance check during the automation process, we got a lot of good feedback from the direct Garmin IT folks. They said, yes, has been done in a smaller scale and we know it's gonna work out, now we can take it into our environment. Versus waiting at the end, try to transfer something, nobody's gonna take a risk to change right away. For our end, it was very easy because we understand their environment, we know what they're expecting, we know their security changes, we know their compliances, so we are able to put into the, our application. So what really helped us in reality, it helped us to eliminate the risks. So as I said, Risk is really a big factor in the government domain. You cannot change everything immediately. You have to go step by step. There are a lot of depends, it's a huge big, right? So if you eliminate or minimize, you cannot eliminate the risk impossible. However, DevOps is really helping us to eliminate the risk in a smaller scale. So instead of changing application in the long run, now we have application at a smaller level and in a release level, so we can manage the risk. How? If something goes wrong, we can go back instead of really affecting everybody else. If there is any security credentials or any security control problem, if there is a risk, it's easy, it's easy to go back and change it, right? If there is any compliance problems during the test phase, we can go back and change it. Instead of waiting at the end of life and it's gonna be so difficult to change. So also other things and risk eliminating, risk taking, help us on getting a trust. So as I said, government is not, it doesn't mean they're trusting anybody, but there's a lot of documentation, rules and regulation makes people uncomfortable. So to eliminate that problem, really we have to gain the risk from all the way, starting from end user, going back to the upper management. So the key point is get it smaller scale and release it and get their trust in an easy way. So we, we earn that their trust basically. Then start to get all the IT folks and working with us closely, getting our application to their production environment and getting using their databases and all this stuff much easier, even though we are able to get some access either. So what had happened, we didn't really change the cultural things in the government. So in reality, we changed the same work, but different approach. So instead of really changing their bureaucracy, we are using their bureaucracy, we are using their techniques as a government techniques, getting a DevOps away. So our goal was really to delivering application of high quality and right on time, get the visibility. So, Changing that thought idea and working closer together, that really helped us and change the cultural thought in the government space. So now, IT folks from Garmin, whoever is gonna take the application responsibility, they know that there's an automated script, I can run it, I can repeat it again, great, I change it. And the program manager knows if there is any, I need anything else for documentation, I can really use my documentation server built in, I can give them a requirement scheduling or the full-blown project management documentation easily to transfer to them, which is the change again culture. Even though they have a shared point system maybe, they have di their own documentations and stuff, so we are able to get and supply enough materials and data for them to use it. As we know that government is doing a lot of metrics, so if we have application has recording some metrics about why we decided, why we change it, what was the main reason for application switching from one end to another end, and give a lot of insight for the government folks. They, they learned that they used it. So they see the benefits of using a DevOps 
as automation documentation, also looking for documents very easily, and also looking for more visible into the everything else, make, make them life easier to get more information and use it. So another aspect is really using DevOps way and method and help for government folks and us change their culture of thought. Still they're using their own methods and way, however they're able to get information much quicker and much visible throughout the application development. So at the end, we got a good result. We were successful and we were able to deliver it. So key point is really we delivered something right on time and then they were happy. It's really end user oriented and the end user knows what's supposed to do. So all the application is kind of like a, and not really a wholesale approach, it's always incremental release. Go step by step, go step by step and let them learn what they have. Let them use what they have, use the usability study, use the user-centric design that make them much easier and we were successful at that. So that's really, it. and we got DevOps really helping us on government domain. So there's many examples right now that who are using the DevOps way. So UCIS using very heavily in DevOps things, UCIS, which is immigration services. And it's whole DevOps things right now. And also, there's a lot of organization within the civil and agencies and using the uh, Amazon AWS cloud or the, uh, in the Microsoft Azure platform, it's capable to use the, some of the government techniques and stuff, it's compatible. So as long as, as a DevOps community, we know what's the right tools, we know what's the right methods to access it, there is a way to work with governments and we made it, I am sure I was gonna make the same things and moving forward. So as an SCI, you would like to do a couple of announcements. As an SCI, so we have, and offering the training and for DevOps workshops. So our approach is really teach the community in terms of the way, in, way of the, how we do the for DevOps in not the tooling aspect, looking for techniques and process methodologies. And also we have a symposium at the beginning of November in DC talking about the more challenging stuff and talk about the more private sectors and get together government, government and private talk about more DevOps. And that's going to conclude my slide, and I would like to thank you. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to me. We have a booth over there, so we would like to hear your challenges, and we would like to hear about uh, how you guys do, and we can, we can help you to achieve your, your problems when you try to get DevOps. And then, and if you have anything else, email, please send me an email. And also, we have a nice blog post and talking about all these challenges through the SCI website. You guys can access that information and feel free to download it. I would like to thank you guys, and hope to see you next year in DevOps Days again. Thank you very much, Hassan.